Hello, welcome to another program of Study the Word. This is brought to you every week by the Church of Christ that meets at 5600 Van Road in Newburgh, Indiana. That's two miles east of Castle High School, just off of 261. Folks, if you're ever in the area, please come and be with us. We have been so thrilled to have viewers just show up at our services uh, wanting to come and visit, and we really appreciate that. And if you're ever in the area, please come and be with us. If you're not familiar with the area, go to our website, www.riverridgechurch.org. And it'll have directions and our times of services. And of course, if you can't get out, we would love for you to tune in and watch our services live over our website. That's just one of the tools that we have. Please take note of the phone number you're going to see at the bottom of your screen throughout the program. That's for you to participate. Whether you have a Bible question we can use on this program, or if you'd like to request one of our free Bible study helps. Now they will be listed from time to time at the bottom of your screen throughout our program today. So please jot down that phone number and if any of those appeal to you, please get in touch with us. Alright, we're going to go ahead and get into our Bible study today. And our question came rather recently and it's put like this. How do I join the church? Well, that's a rather interesting question and there's a lot of ways that we can deal with it. The first thing I would like for us to be aware of is when somebody says they want to join the church, the question comes to mind, which church? Now what we would encourage you to do is to have a desire to belong to the church you read about in the Bible. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, Jesus said he was going to build his church. He wasn't talking about a physical structure. He was talking about a spiritual body, his own special people. Because the word means to call out. And in this case, to be called out of darkness. And so, Jesus did build his church. Acts chapter 20 in verse 28 said he purchased it with his own blood. So when Jesus died and resurrected and went back to heaven and they went everywhere preaching the gospel, those people who obeyed, those people who were saved from their past sins, we find in Acts chapter 2 and in verse 47 that the Lord adds them to his church. Now that's important as we deal with today's question, how do I join the church? Well, the word church is used two ways in the New Testament, and we need to understand how it is used. Why? Because people are just confused. I remember one time a person said, Chuck, my church is right here. Well, they may be sincere, but, but they just don't know what they're talking about because you can't say the church is right here. The same reason I can't say, even though I'm a married man and have children, I can't say, my family's right here. Well, you see, I'm a member of the family, but I'm not the family. I can be a member of a church, but I can't be the church. So let's just try to clear up some of these confusions while we deal with the question, how do I join the church? The word church is used two ways. Number one, it's used in a universal sense. When Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16 and in verse 18, I'm going to build my church, he did not say churches. I'm going to build my church. One. There's one body. Ephesians chapter 4, he tells us that in verses 4 and 5. The one body which is the church. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22 and in verse 23. Now having said all of that, knowing that there's one church, am I getting on here every week and telling you that this is brought to you by the Church of Christ that meets at 56, uh, 5600 Van Road, that that is the only church in the world that you should attend? No, because the word is also used in a local sense. 
And what I mean by that is that there's one universal body of Christ. Anytime somebody becomes a Christian, Jesus adds them to his church. That, that's what we read there in, in Acts chapter 2. Because people were obeying the gospel message. I know that because when Peter and the other apostles were preaching, the message had convicted a number of the listeners. I can read in verse 37. Now when they heard this, when they heard what? The gospel. They were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Well, that tells me that they were cut to the heart because they believed. You see, you don't believe something that, or excuse me, you're not con, uh, cut to the heart unless you believe. And when they asked the question what to do, in verse 38 it says that Peter said to them, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now verse 41 reads, Then those who gladly received the word, or his word, were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. So people were obeying the gospel. People became um, a part of the body of Christ. Well, how did that happen? Well, that was what I mentioned earlier in verse 47. It said, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Now that's going to help us understand one aspect of the question. How do I join the church? Well, the church that we would like to be a part of ought to be the church that Jesus built, that he purchased with his own blood. How do you do that? Well, first of all, we're talking about the universal body of Christ. We're going to talk about a local church in just a moment. There are local churches. We know that just by reading our New Testament. There was a letter written to the church at Corinth, Philippi, Ephesus, Galatia. You see, those were churches in different cities. And as a matter of fact, in Romans chapter 16 and verse 16, Paul sent greetings on behalf of the churches of Christ. So I want us to make sure that we, we understand there is not a contradiction here because Jesus said, I'm going to build my church and yet we read there are churches. Well, that's where you need to understand what we read here in Acts chapter 2. When people become Christians, I don't care where you are on the face of this earth, when you obey the gospel, the Lord adds to the church daily those who are being saved. Who's saved? The person who obeys the gospel. Has their sins remitted? They've been born again. They become Christians. When that happens, Jesus, as we read here, automatically does it. It's not like you actually see something because it's a spiritual body. And in the spiritual realm, there, there are no boundaries. And the best illustration I can give you for that is if, let's say, you're living in Indiana and you get a call from your son that lives in California and he says, Dad or Mom, you're a new grandparent. My wife just gave birth. You're sitting there thinking, well, I didn't see anything. Well, you don't see anything. It's just an automatic thing. That child became a part of your family. There are no borders. And so when somebody becomes a Christian, it says Jesus puts them in his church. That tells me that I can never put anybody in the church. I don't have that power. A church can't put anybody in the church. <laughs> Do you understand that? Because the church belongs to Christ. Colossians chapter 1 and in verse 18, Christ is the head of the church. And it belongs to him. And he has all the authority. Matthew 28 and verse 18. So if Jesus has all the authority, here I am as a member of the church. I'm a preacher within the church. How much authority do I have? None. Why? Because Jesus has it all. How much does the, the whole church as a whole have? 
None. Why? Because Christ has all the authority. That's what we need to understand. So when we're talking about the church, we're talking about that which belongs to Christ. That's important. So when you say, how do I join the church? Well, part A of our study today is dealing with the universal body of Christ. And how you become a part of that is by obeying the gospel, and Jesus automatically does it. I can't keep anybody out of that church if they obey the gospel, if they do things according to the, the word of God. Now, what's important to understand is if you don't obey the gospel, you're not a part of that church. You can say you're a part of that church, but you're really not. It's kind of like if you have some children and they invite some friends over for dinner. They can sit around your table, they can be in your house, but they're not a part of your family. We understand that. They're just visiting. And just going to a, a church building and, and, and engaging in the same thing that those people are doing, singing and praying and studying, it doesn't make you a member of the universal body of Christ until you become a Christian. Do you understand that? You can go to a place for 40 years and never miss one of their services. It doesn't mean you are a member of the body of Christ. You say, well, what do you mean? To become a part of the Lord's church, you have to obey the gospel and he will automatically add you. And as we pointed out, and if you want some more material on this, we'll be glad to send it to you. Please text us or call us. But you need to hear the gospel. You need to believe. You know, faith comes by hearing. So those two are important. You need to hear the gospel in order to believe. And then, of course, you need to repent. We read that a moment ago in Acts 2 and in verse 38. And you need to confess. Romans chapter 10 and verse 10. You need to confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Christ. And you need to be baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins. Those are the steps. That's the plan of salvation in a nutshell. You need to understand what you're doing when you're baptized. Because if you don't, you're going to just get wet. That's Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 5. And there were people there who may have thought that they were in the Lord's church, but they weren't because they did not obey the gospel properly. Paul pointed out, basically, that they just got wet when they found out that their baptism of John was not valid. They immediately got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. That's why you do it. So we are talking about the the one true church, universal. Now that universal body of Christ, that one church that Jesus established, will never be destroyed. You don't have to worry about that. That's what Jesus promised in Matthew 16, verse 18, and in verse 19. I'm going to build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. You're not going to destroy that universal body of Christ. You can't. It's impossible. That that one true church, it's not organized. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is not organized. So you're not working through a diocese. You know, a certain chapter. Um, a certain district. No, that, that doesn't exist. Because the universal body of Christ, although it's one in number, and it's all over the world. Anybody that obeys the gospel, I don't care where you live, the Lord automatically adds you to his one true church. So there isn't a headquarters. There's not an earthly headquarters anywhere. There's not a hierarchy system. They don't get together for a conference once a year. It's not a board of directors. There's not certain people that are deciding what, what the whole body of Christ is going to believe. Because Christ is the head. And we need to be following Him. Because He has all the authority. Alright, so that's one part. But we can't stop there. Because some people might think, you know, if I just become a Christian, now I don't have to go anywhere. Because this universal body of Christ is not organized in any way. They don't meet 
You know, the whole world doesn't come together at the same place to worship. And that's true. And so somebody thinks, well, Chuck, since the universal body of Christ, that one true church that Jesus built, does not come together, then I guess I don't have to worship anywhere with a group of people. We need to get to part B. Because in the New Testament, the word church is used universally, like we talked about, and locally. A local church. When Paul wrote the letter to the church at Corinth, go to Revelation chapter 2 and 3. You'll find that the Lord wrote seven letters to seven different churches. Now each one of those churches, locally, are made up of people that have been added to the universal body of Christ. Now in order to answer this question, how do I join the church? Well, you just become a Christian, but no, how do I be join a, a local group? Okay, that's, that's, that's a good question. And we have some information about that in Acts chapter 9. Because in Acts chapter 9, when Saul, who we later know as Paul the Apostle, when he became a Christian and he changed his life and he wanted to come down and, and be a part of the church at Jerusalem, notice what happens here. In Acts chapter 9 and in verse 26, And while Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So basically Barnabas, you know, told the group there that, no, 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 he's, he's a changed man. They reassured him. So there's a number of things that we can learn from this. When Paul went down there to join the church at Jerusalem, to become a part of that local church, he didn't have to get baptized into that church. He didn't get voted into that church. There was no kind of initiation. Here's my point you need to see. If you have a group of Christians coming together as a church, now who are these Christians? Those are people that Jesus has added to his church. So they're in the one true body of Christ. Now they're in a certain city and they're coming together as a church like they're supposed to do and they're commanded to. We must assemble, Hebrews 10 and verse 25. We are to worship, John 4 and 24. This local congregation. Now, when a person's added, like Saul, and he wants to come down and join just like we are on Van Road, if somebody's a Christian and the Lord has added him to the universal body of Christ and he moves to the Newburgh area and he comes out and assembles with us and says, I want to become a part of that local congregation, can we say no? No, we can't. Why not? Because the Lord has already added them. Now, if the Lord hasn't added them, that's like these people here, was Saul really converted? If somebody's not a Christian, they can't be a part of that local church. Now, they can come and worship with them and be a visitor and they would be welcomed. But to be a member of the body of Christ, the Lord does that. He adds you after you obey the gospel. Then your responsibility is, is to go assemble with others who are Christians. And that local congregation is organized. Philippians chapter 1 and in verse 1, it's organized with elders and with deacons and with teachers can have an evangelist. It can be organized. It's organized that they have a, a set time that they come together. And God is not the author of confusion. We read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So when the church comes together and they, they're organized, they sing songs and there's a prayer and there's a sermon. There's, they take up a collection. They remember the Lord's death these things that they are to do. Now, the universal body of Christ does not come together and do that. We don't get together, all the Christians in the world, at the same place and do those things. You don't find that in the Scriptures. But you do find that when somebody becomes a Christian, their responsibility is to become part of a local congregation. They can't say, well, I'm not going to go anywhere I became a Christian, I'm just going to stay at home 
and worship God on my own. No, no. You, you, their responsibility is to become a part of a local church, a flock, so to speak. I'm actually quoting from 1 Peter chapter 5, where Peter tells the elders of a local church in verse 2, shepherd the flock of God which is among you. Elders are not to oversee another flock, another church. They're not supposed to do that. Their oversight is over that one congregation. And they know who their members are. That's my point. You can join. You can become a part of that. But what's the process? How does a person join? Well, they just verbally say, I want to place my membership. I want to be a part of this local work and work together. If they're a Christian, they're faithful to the Lord, that local church has no right to say, you can't. Why? Because the church does not belong to them. It belongs to Jesus. The church where I go, who's the head? It better be Christ. And if Christ is not the head, that means we're teaching or practicing something that's unlawful. And if that's the case, then we're just a religious group. But if we're going to be the church that's Christ, we better listen to Him and be organized the way He designed it on a local level. And when a person says, well, Chuck, how do I join the church? Well, first of all, you need to become a Christian. Jesus adds you. Nobody can do that. Only Jesus can add you. And when you find a faithful congregation, you need to verbally tell them, I want to be recognized because the elders here are to shepherd the flock which is among them, which means they know who are among them. They know who their sheep are, so to speak, who the members are. Now, we need to keep in mind with this that it's not like a business. It's not like some uh, club, some lodge. It's the body of Christ. And so we have a directory. You know who the members are. So if you, we need to contact somebody, if somebody's sick, we can send them a card, send them an email, go visit them. But just because we have a, a, a directory, just because my name's written in that directory doesn't mean my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You know, because my responsibility is to make sure that I'm living faithfully to God, not just worshiping, but being a good husband, being a good neighbor, being a good citizen. You know, so I have so many responsibilities as a Christian, as all of us do, as members of the body of Christ. So when I'm a, as being a member, even right now, I'm, I'm in my home, I'm still a member of the church. And so I got to be mindful of my conduct when I'm out and about. I go shopping, wherever I am, in recreation. Um, watch my tongue and, and watch my actions and not do things that are ungodly. My job is not to bring reproach upon the church because the local church is to keep itself unspotted from the world. You can read in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, where a member of the church was living ungodly and the whole congregation was to discipline that person in order to bring them back, but to withdraw from them. We cannot condone sin. So that local church has that responsibility. So that tells me that when I place my membership, when I become a part of a local congregation, I have responsibilities that are beyond the four walls of that church building. I'm to live godly, be an example to others, and be an encouragement. I'm not to forsake the assembly. I'm to gather to worship God the way He commanded. And so let's just take it through simply now so you understand what would it take for you to become a part of a local congregation that is a church of Christ. Well, we've had other programs. Not all churches of Christ are faithful to God, so you need to be careful. But I'm saying once you find that, number one, you become a Christian. You say, well, Chuck, I'm not. Well, you can become one. Contact us. We'll help you. We'll step, sit down with you, make sure you understand the steps. You can become a Christian. When that happens, on that day, there not to be anybody around. You know, in Acts chapter 8, there was only the eunuch and Philip. There's only two people there. And Philip baptized them. So there's no some baptismal ceremonies. But when, that, when you become a Christian, at that moment, you're a member of the universal body of Christ. 
your next step. Find a faithful church that's near you. There might be a number of them, so you might want to visit around and make sure you want to attend a faithful congregation. And when you decide, well, you know what, I want to, I want to be here, well, then you make it known to that congregation that you want to become a part of that local group to work with them. And then you understand a lot of the New Testament here because a lot of the New Testament talks about how that we as brothers and sisters need to encourage each one, help each other, pray for one another, work together, spread the good news, and all of that. And once you do that, now you continue to grow and serve the Lord faithfully till death and try to help other people to become members of the body of Christ. Remember, you're not trying to convert people to any church. You're trying to convert them to Christ. And when you convert them to Christ, he puts that new convert in his body, and he knows that within his body are these local faithful churches. And if a faithful church becomes unfaithful, they just become a religious group. So you have a grave responsibility, folks, to make sure that where you attend, that it's a church that Jesus purchased with his own blood, not a man-made, denominational organization. And don't be fooled all the time. Even sometimes when people say, we're non-denominational, well, that's just another fancy word for saying they're a non-denominational, denominational church. They cling to denominational teachings. They just don't want to affiliate themselves with any particular group. No, I don't belong to a denomination, but I just want to belong to the church that Christ purchased. It's blood-bought, it's important, it's valuable, you need to seek it. We have a Bible study of how to find the church you read about in the Bible. If you're interested in that, please give us a call. We'll send you that information. We have that free six lesson home Bible study course. We can have a face-to-face -face Bible study. I'm getting those requests all the time. And I can never have too many of them. You want to have a face-to-face -face Bible study? Give a call. We'll arrange a time. We'll sit around the kitchen table, open up our Bibles, and just study. Don't forget our live radio program every Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock, 98.5 on your FM dial. You can request to be put on the mailing list for our weekly bulletin. Don't forget to watch our services live streamed over the internet on our website. Folks, we're just trying to help you to become familiar with the Word of God, and we hope that you'll be a regular viewer of this program. We save them on DVD, any of our programs, if you'd like a copy of them, just let us know. It's free. I had a lady last week said, can you make a couple of copies of some of your programs for me to have at home? I said, sure. And so I'm going to get them out tomorrow. We hope you'll be back here next week as we once again deal with another Bible question. And it's not too late for you to call or text a question that we can use in next week's program. We'd love to hear from you, what you think of our program, whatever it might be. May we always have that desire, though, to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Thank you, folks, and have yourselves a great day.